All right, the last type of probability I want to actually show you is geometric probability. Geometric probability, it deals with area of shape. So because we haven't gone into um, how to find areas of polygons, we're just going to keep it pretty straightforward here. So I have a rectangle. Let's call this rectangle this length 15 and this length 10. Inside the rectangle, I have another rectangle. And let's call this 9. And let's call this, you know, let's say 7. Okay. So what is the probability that if I would take a dart and I would throw, that it would land in this outside shaded area right here? If I'm not even aiming and I just randomly throw it, oof, just throw it. What is the chance, what's the probability I'm going to land in that outside region? Uh, pretty easy to actually figure out. What I need to do is I need to take the area of the entire thing. Let's find the area of the whole shape itself. The area of the whole shape, uh, because it's a rectangle, my area is going to be length times width, which is simply going to be 15 times 10, which gives me 150. So the area of this is 150. So hopefully when I'm throwing a dart, uh, I'm going to hit it. It's got, I have 150, let's call these inches. Let's call all these inches. So this is squared in inches squared. So in square inches. All right, next thing I need to figure out, what is the area of this other part in the middle here? So that part is still length times width. So nine times seven, nine times seven, which is gonna give me 63 inches squared because this is an inch times inch, which gives me inches squared. All right. So, so far so good. I know the area of the big one. I know the area of the small one. Now this is a composite figure. So if I actually want to find the area of this outside region, I don't need to go crazy by cutting it up and trying to do all these crazy things. Just take your larger area minus your smaller area, which gives me 150 minus 63, which should be 87. Seven makes, that makes 90 and then yeah, 87. So 87 square inches is the area that I'm actually aiming for. So I have 150 inches for the whole thing. I don't want to be in the middle here. I don't want to be in this, this 63 square inch area. I want to be out here in this 87 inch squared area. So what's the probability of me just throwing a random dart at it without aiming and actually landing in my shaded area? All I do is divide the areas. I want to do my 87 inches, inches squared divided by my overall 150 inches squared. And you just go throw it in the calculator. And when you throw it in the calculator, we're going to get 0.58. So that means roughly, you know, to find the percent, just move your decimal two spots or multiply by 100. So 58% of the time, if I just throw a random dart, I'm gonna land in this shaded area. Now this is definitely not drawn to scale. The other way is if I wanted to find the area of this inside part right here, I don't actually have to do any more calculations because of that magic number of one. The 100% of this, 150% is 100% of this. I don't have to calculate anything. If I know it's 0.58 or 58%, this other area, if I throw a dart in there, all I have to do is do one minus 0.58. This is called the complement of it, which is going to give me 0.42 or 42% of the time. So if I'm just throwing a random dart at this geometric shape and I can tell you with certain precision, after doing it multiple, multiple, multiple times experimentally, that I'm gonna land 58% on this outer ring, and I'm gonna land 42% on this inner ring. Now, of course, then you always have these other- Hi, I'm Mr. Buzzer, and I'm making these videos a supplemental instruction for my students. If you found these videos actually informative, or they answer the question you're looking for, make sure you hit the like button, and then don't forget to subscribe, and then click the bell to receive notifications for future instructional math videos.